What's up guys, welcome back to Tidal Gardens. People have been clamoring lately for some more advanced topics, so this definitely fits the bill. What you see here are a variety of colonial tunicates, which are filter feeding invertebrates. After having spent some time with these, I find them incredibly interesting and incredibly beautiful. The downside, of course, is that they're probably one of the hardest things to keep alive. We'll get into that a little bit, because it really depends on what type of tunicate you ended up with. So let's start by going over what a tunicate is and what a tunicate is not. Tunicates are sometimes called sea squirts, are often misidentified in the coral hobby as sponges, and in fact these were sold to us as tiger sponges, but in reality they're quite a lot different. Tunicates are a type of chordate. Now if chordate might sound familiar, people are chordates, we actually share the same phylum. Corals, for example, are nidarians, which are defined by having stinging cells. Chordates share similarities in their nervous systems, mainly the presence of a notochord and a hollow dorsal nerve cord. Aside from that little bit of trivia, tunicates come in a really wide variety of both colors and shapes. Some of them are isolated individuals, while others are colonial and many of them actually have a free swimming stage as well where basically they look like a tadpole. They're called tunicates because of their tunic-like shape. This tunic bag has two different siphons. There's an input siphon and then an output siphon. This tunic is also an exoskeleton and when I think of exoskeletons I think of ants or crabs that periodically have to shed them. Tunicates, however, have an exoskeleton that grows with them as they get older. So what makes tunicates so challenging? I should back up a minute and preface that with, not all tunicates are challenging. Several of them are practically invasive species. However, the really colorful ones that you probably want to be keeping in your reef aquarium, they tend to be more challenging. And the root cause of that, in my opinion, is the fact that they're filter feeders. Pretty much anything that is a filter feeder in this hobby tends to be on the more challenging end of the spectrum, let's just say. So dendronephthia, um, non-photosynthetic sea fans, things of that sort, tend to be nearly impossible to keep because of the food requirements that need to be present all the time for them. To put it into perspective, these tunicates individually can siphon up 100 gallons per day. So they're definitely seeking out quite a large volume of food. The other issue with feeding tunicates is exactly what should you be feeding tunicates. It turns out that depending on which variety of tunicate that you have, they have different feeding preferences. Some consume large quantities of phytoplankton. Others consume larvae from other animals. There isn't a ton of scientific literature on these either when it comes to what a specific species would be eating. Um, there might be something out there, it, it doesn't hurt to look, but I found it a little bit of a challenge to find. What I decided to do instead was kind of the shotgun method of just a number of different foods and kind of making a slurry and broadcast feeding the entire tank with it. The downside to that, of course, is you're introducing a lot more nutrient into the water, so you really have to pay closer attention to nitrates and phosphates that might build up. Now even doing it that way, you still might not be reaching the nutritional demands of the sea squirts. So it's entirely possible that you broadcast feed a number of different foods and the animal simply does not get enough and starts to shrink and decay. Like I said, these things are not that easy much of the time. A couple of ours started to go downhill, and what I did was I basically loaned them out to some local hobbyists that were keeping systems substantially different from how I was keeping mine. So one in particular keeps his tank at a very, very, very ultra low nutrient level and is, in, is doing a lot of the probiotic methods. 
the tunicates in his system actually not only bounced back, but one of the ones that was really struggling uh, took off, just in practically doubled in size in a few weeks time. So I'm not sure exactly what the, the magic ingredient there was. It could have been um, just the lower nitrates and phosphates. It could have been the excess bacteria in the water column for them to feed on because of the, the probiotic methodologies. It could have been anything. One additive that he was using was from um, KZ that was, I believe it was called sponge power. And I realized that tunicates are not sponges, but they did respond to this product and I decided to pick up a bottle myself and it seemed to help. I wish I could tell you what's in sponge power. Not really sure. Uh, when you smell it, it, uh, it smells like nitrate. So who knows? In any case, if you'd like to try tunicates, be prepared to have to do a lot more research on the front end, as well as doing quite a bit more experimentation with different types of feeding and even changing the way that you filter your aquarium. For example, using one of these probiotic methods that introduce bacteria into the water column periodically. While some of these very brightly colored variants might be somewhat rare to the hobby, there are others that come as hitchhikers and they might not look quite this spectacular. However, they're pretty charming in their own right. And not only that, they're much more likely to survive. A few of the ones that we have are actually fairly bulletproof. If you do end up with one of these bulletproof hitchhikers, congratulations. And that's probably a good, I guess, beginning step into the world of tunicates. All right, now I'm gonna open it up to comments and questions. So tell me what your experience is with tunicates or even filter feeders in general. It's a cutting edge of the hobby and not very many people have success with these types of organisms. So please share your experiences in the comments below. All right, that does it from here. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. And for those of you already subscribed, please hit that notification bell for me. Thanks again. Happy reefing.